Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us again. We're going to have a conversation with Jamie Milas this morning, Vice President of Marketing and Medical Microinstruments, uh, SPA, at an Italian startup robotics company. She's joining us here to talk about their robotic systems for microsurgery. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Jamie Milas. Thank you, Neil. Pleasure to be here. Well, give our listeners a bit of your professional background. Of course, I mentioned your position there at Medical Micro Instruments. And then let's talk about some of these issues uh, in microsurgery that uh, your technology can address. Absolutely. So I've been in the medical device field for about 14 years. Everything from 3D printing to surgical planning software, and even um, large capital imaging equipment. So I've always been kind of drawn to the cutting edge of, of healthcare. And of course, hearing about this surgical system that can help in microsurgery, I was very excited and was really looking forward to joining the team. So I actually moved to Italy and am the vice president of marketing for MMI, as you, as you said, and we're making the Samani surgical system. And indeed, it's actually targeted for open surgery and particularly in the beginning, microsurgery. And the concept, you know, that we're really focused on is it's to really restore critical flow through anastomosis, to repair the lymphatic system, and also to restore sensation through like nerve coaptation. So our advice is really helping the surgeon to do those uh, three different types of surgeries with more precision and to be able to, you know, scale their hand movements and, and provide uh, a stable way to, to work in those, those three procedure groups. Well, you mentioned some of the uh, procedures that fall into the category of microsurgery. Are there any new procedures that uh, your technology can introduce, things that uh, we couldn't do before that now we can? Absolutely, Neil. Essentially, microsurgery, we typically think of free flaps and reconstructive surgery. So you're essentially taking an autogalous piece of tissue, muscle, or bone, or, or all three, and transporting it from one area of the body to another. And essentially, when you do that, you have to reconnect the vessels to, to bring back that critical blood flow and keep that piece of the body alive um, wherever you decide to, to transplant it. So this can be used, of course, for a toggleless breast reconstruction. It's often used for orthopedic procedures to repair major injuries, and certainly for trauma or replantation of fingers, hands, um, anything like that. So in addition, what we're hoping to do is one, of course, improve the outcomes with those types of procedures, which are already very, very challenging. You're talking about long procedures that take several hours for the surgeon to perform. And of course, this very delicate, difficult step happens at the end of the procedure where the surgeon must reconnect these special vessels. And it's extremely taxing and challenging. And the surgeon has to deal with a lot of, of things such as tremor, difficulty accessing these small vessels, and even training. It takes years and years to be able to do these types of procedures. So we hope that with the Samani surgical system, one, that we can help to shorten the learning curve on many levels. Clearly, the surgeon would still have to understand microsurgery and anatomy and how to prepare and dissect uh, for the procedure. Now they can spend more time learning how to do these special techniques with the robot which will help them enormously. So you can imagine that the human hands have a natural tremor, mm -hmm. which is difficult when you're connecting two vessels that are so small. And when I say small, microsurgery is considered like two millimeter vessels or, or less, and even down to 0.2 millimeters. So you can imagine sewing together with eight stitches, a small vessel with just 0.2 millimeters in diameter. And those type of procedures, for example, are lymphatic surgery. So you know there's like 200 million people in the world struggling and suffering from lymphedema. And today there's really no real cure, okay? They have to be treated throughout the entire course of their life. And unfortunately, it continues to get worse and worse, and the symptoms become worse and worse for the patient. So now with this type of device, we're hoping to expand the number of surgeons that are capable of doing this special lymphatic surgery, which would really act as a cure for those patients. So you can actually restore the lymphatic system before you cause permanent damage. So that's really exciting. And I think that that's an area, just as a simple example, and one I think that many people can relate to that will be very meaningful. Um, you know, 30-some percent of women who have breast cancer often end up with lymphedema. 
because of the surgery. Um, and, and really, there's many causes of lymphedema. So this will allow the surgeons to reconnect that entire system and, and allow that flow to, you know, keep their, their arms or their legs in a normal size and normal functionality. When I envision robotics, you know, I go to the sci-fi network or, or some movie and you see the person with these clamps, they're not actually mimicking their hand movements. Does your technology mimic the actual movement of the hands? Good question, Neil. Yes, actually, we our system is teleoperated. So essentially, the surgeon sits in an ergonomic and comfortable console chair and they look through the microscope while moving their hands in the normal gestures that they would always move, in fact. So typically, they would have to position their arms on the patient, put their instruments into the opening, and delicately and slowly, while using a microscope, sew together these special vessels. So you can imagine with the robot, they can sit in a comfortable console, look through the microscope, and they're actually able to move their hands with the exact same movement and motion. However, the technology will scale their movements from seven to 20 times. So it's giving them that precision and the accuracy and removing that necessity to make these small micro movements that allows them to move in much larger gestures. So that's really an important factor. Um, this scaling factor also, of course, contributes to eliminating the tremor as these surgeons perform their surgeries and, and allows the precision whenever they're passing the suture through these small, delicate vessels. Well, Jamie, what are some of the challenges in general with microsurgery that um, your technology, the Samani uh, system, can address? There are uh, unfortunately many challenges in microsurgery. One, it's really a specialized technique and, and specialized surgery that requires additional training well beyond a typical surgical uh, residency. So these surgeons are often traveling all over the world to do these special microsurgical programs. And it's because, you know, the one, the anatomy is extremely small and delicate. You have to learn how to perform surgery while using an optical microscope. And also, it's very important to learn how to position your body to help eliminate tremor as you're operating. And all of those things take a very, very long time to learn and, and to perfect. And essentially, the, the real thing that matters with microsurgery is that when you connect two vessels or you connect the lymphatic ducts or you connect a nerve, that you do it in a way that doesn't damage the, the vessel and doesn't cause thrombosis, meaning that the flow can continue after you close the patient and that flap remains viable or the lymphatic um, fluids can move through or the nerve starts to grow back together and repair. So that takes a long time. And, and part of the issue as well is that the surgeons are always in a very awkward position at the bedside, trying to look in the microscope, trying to position their hands and their arms in a certain way. With the Samani surgical system, they can sit at the bedside, they can be sterile, and they can look through the microscope, but they could also actually use a new technology such as the 3D heads-up microscope, which would allow them to look at a large screen in 3D and perform the same procedure without having to strain their body in an odd configuration to use the microscope. So I think that's exciting. And the other aspect, of course, is that as surgeons age, they become better and better, right? So some of the microsurgeons with 15, 20 years of experience are really at the peak of their career. But 45 and 50 is also when the human natural hand tremor starts to increase, and it continues to increase throughout the rest of our lives. So you can imagine that a surgeon who's 50, 55 is really at the peak of their career. They certainly don't want to stop performing surgery. Mm -hmm. And that's when they really want to start to expand and do additional procedures and, and really can help and make a meaningful impact for patients. So with the Samani surgical system and the ability to scale your hand movements and the ability to minimize tremor, that will allow the surgeons to perform microsurgery much, much longer in their career which will increase access for patients, meaning that there's more hospitals and more surgeons that can offer microsurgery and therefore can offer these solutions to patients. Now, where is your technology currently available? And um, if it isn't currently available, um, when do you anticipate approval and availability for use? So we currently have the CE mark, which allows us to sell, of course, all through Europe. And we've done our first eight human cases uh, in Florence. And essentially, we'll be able to expand that now that we're commercially available in Europe. 
So our goal is really to start to work with some of the cutting edge and leading microsurgical centers in Europe and gather the data, of course, to then submit to the FDA so that we can get FDA clearance and start to address the U.S. market, which, of course, is, is very important to our company and very important to the healthcare world. Well, uh, Jamie, I appreciate you joining us here on uh, Health Professional Radio. Give us a website where we can learn more about uh, MMI and the technology that we've been talking about today. Yes, uh, you can find out more information on our website, mmimicro.com, and you can also follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter to hear all of our latest news. Thank you once again for joining us here on the program. Lots of great information. Looking forward to uh, speaking with you again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Neil. It's been a pleasure. Have a great day. You as well. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Jamie Milas. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.